Hi, this is Mr. New, and welcome to another episode of Illustrator CS5 for East Tech. This is part two of the pen tool. So let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and open up Illustrator, and I will create a new file, print, and we'll keep everything else the same. Click OK, and we are ready to go. Command O will throw us out there to a full screen on one artboard, and Command R will bring up my rulers. Right click in the ruler, I can change it to inches. I'm going to go ahead and pull out some guides like I did before because one of the pieces of art we did the last time, there is an easier way that we can also accomplish that task and I want to show that to you as well. So I'm going to pull out horizontal guides at one inch, two inch, and three inch. I'm going to pull vertical guides out to one inch two and a half, four, five and a half, and finally seven. There we go. We also want to make sure that our guides are locked. Another shortcut is if we right click, we can actually make sure our guides are locked by right clicking anywhere in our artboard. I'll slide this over to the corner. So it'll be a little bit easier to see with our rulers. And I'm going to zoom in on just that part of the artwork, just on my grid. I'm going to start by clicking on the pen tool. And I want to pull out the tear out. I do like working that way with the pen tool. Set it right about there. Start with a stroke, black stroke. Let's bump the points up to about four. And I am just going to go ahead and lay anchor points right across this horizontal line that falls at two inches. So there's one two, three, four, and five. We have a straight line. What I also want you to notice too is, I don't know if you notice this, as I went across these, I had my snapping on. If I go up to view and all the way down here to snap, I have it set to snap to point. What that means is every time I come to a point, one of those intersections, whatever tool I have active is going to snap to that point. I'll show you right now when I go back out to my convert anchor point tool. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating those loops like I did before with points at each anchor point. And if I click on that anchor point, click and drag, if I drag down, as I get close to that next bar, it will snap. Now on this next one, this is what I'm going to be showing you that's a little bit different. I can click and drag up because once again my path is going to be going in the direction of my handle. But now that I let go my handle is available to click, drag, and pull down. So now this next handle is locked into place. If I click, drag up, let it snap, let go, click and drag down and it snaps into place. Next one, I'm going to click, drag up, let it snap, click on that one, drag down, and it snaps into place. And finally, the last one, all I need to do is click and drag up. If I click off of this now, I now have that same design I had before. The only difference is, is I saved myself a few extra steps, which is always a good idea. Okay, we're going to create another guide down here at about four inches. We'll drop it right about there, and I'll let go right there. I'm not worried about any other horizontals, because this one's not going to be necessarily that exact. I'm going to start with a pen tool again. This time what I wanted to point out to you is if I click and drag at an angle, the path will follow the direction of that particular handle. So if I pull out to here and let go, my path is going to form that direction. In fact, I am going to command minus to zoom out a little bit. As I click right here and drag the other direction, I can form a very shallow concave. In fact, I'm going to make this one a little bit sharper of an angle. So it's a little sharper here and a bigger angle on this end. And with that shape, I'm going to use my selection tool and select this new piece that I created. I am going to copy with a command C and I will paste with a command V. With this new piece selected, I'm going to object, transform, and reflect this on a horizontal axis. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag and place this above 
the other object I just had, and I don't have to be real exact about it, but I'm just going to lay it right up there. And for added dramatization, I'm going to go ahead and color this. I'll do a lighter green on the top. Let me select the bottom one. I'll go with a darker green on the bottom. And then I'm going to zoom in on the tip. Now, we have, if I click off and hover, I have an anchor point there. I also have an anchor point over here. I'm going to go ahead and shut the guides off for now, so we don't need those on anymore. So that was a command colon. And now I want to use my direct select tool and select just the two anchor points at the end. If I go to object, path, and average, and I average to both, it's going to bring those two anchor points together. With them still selected, I will go to object, path, join, and it has now brought the two to a point. And notice also how the color of the fill have both joined together as the same color. If I go to the other end, and I will click off to deselect and select those two pieces, object, path, average, both, and now I'm going to do an object, path, join, it has now joined that end as well. Command zero to go full out on this, regular selection two and click off, I now have this kind of a leaf looking object. I will click on it right now and I want to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees. I can grab that little arrow and while I hit the shift key it will constrain it to 45 degrees. There we go. And drag that on down. We're going to do one more thing with this. In fact I'm going to change this to yellow and we're going to create kind of a ear of corn graphic we might want to use in a logo somewhere. So first thing I'm going to do is copy and paste. I'll drag that over to the side. And with the bounding box, I'm going to go ahead and shrink that down. I'm going to pull that over to one side, change the color to green, and I'll slide that into place here. Let's adjust that a little bit more up. I'm going to copy and paste that. Go to Object Transform, Reflect. This time I'm going to reflect on a vertical. OK. Drag this path down, and I'll make that one a little bit darker still. So now we have our ear of corn. Once again, you understand how to create artwork using the pen tool. The exactness of this will give us very clean graphics to things that we're trying to create. We can always modify them as we go. If I wanted to make this inner piece a little thicker, I can pull those out. If I was using guides, I could be a little bit more exact still. There we go. And once again, this is a matter of just playing around with it and practicing until you get good at setting up that tool. I want you to play around with the pen tool now and see if you can't come up with different designs on your own and see if you can keep them exact by using guides and grids and the ruler tool. That's it for part two of the pen tool, and we'll see you on the next episode.